Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Colton Dunson and this is Living Bullish with Colton. Perfect. So thank you all again for being here. I'm really excited for this video. We're going to start off by covering a couple topics that's been discussed in the comments over the last couple of videos. So I'm really excited to do this. And then what we're going to do is dive into gold's price action over the last 36 hours. There's been a couple opportunities. I hope that everybody or some of everybody has been able to take advantage of it. If not, hopefully you're training your eye and practicing on the demo account. Just to remind everybody, right? I am not a professional and I'm not a financial advisor. Everything that we cover on this channel is for education and entertainment purposes only. And I'm really excited to and share the information that's helped me go next level with everybody here on this channel. But to go ahead and start this off, right? I understand that 95% of people here on the channel uh, really enjoy the content. They love getting the extra value to the free lessons when it comes to understanding the ways that the markets might be moved behind the scenes versus you know, what other people may teach and all that. And I just want to clear, you know, really the elephant in the room uh, when it comes to mentors and when it comes to who I've learned from um, and what my real intentions are with this channel, right? This, my YouTube happened by accident, right? Over a year ago, I had uploaded a couple webinars that I did with my team and I uploaded them to YouTube so they could come back and rewatch the recordings. Little did I know that would take me to 400 subscribers and then over quarantine, I just had a lot of time and I decided to, you know, raise the bar a little bit, start the confirmation checklist. And, you know, we've added about a thousand people over the last 60 days. So it's been super exciting, but my intentions has never been to steal other people's work. Um, really just to share the information that's been passed down for me. You guys got to understand that all the information that we hear today is reused information, right? That's the secrets of the wealthy. It's all in the information. So here are my beliefs, right? Do we teach Wyckoff? Yes, we teach Wyckoff. There's a lot of construct to it. There's a lot of market structure to it. I love it. Now, who, who came up with Market Maker? Who did all this and the other? I understand that ICT has been teaching since 1996. And I truly do believe that he's been one of the grandfathers of all methods when it comes to institutional smart money, all of that. And I love it, right? I personally just didn't find out about him until, you know, recently up until six months ago or so in the beginning of 2019, I got introduced to market maker method by a guy named Steve Morrow out in Tampa, Florida. I had watched his 16 hour course a couple of times. I absolutely loved it. Um, I started realizing why I would lose. I lost so much my first two years trading. Um, and then late, soon after that, there were two traders out in New York that were an inside, side organization from me. They were going hard on the market maker method. So I followed them for a little bit. And then I came across trade house and Mike miles, and they really gave me the course and the extra tools and, uh, you know, education to help me go next level. And I've just been here sharing my info, you know, sharing what I've learned. Cause I understand that everybody needs help with these methods as well. Now I found again, like other YouTubes, like ICT, you know, at the end of 2019. And again, like I love all the content, everything I, I use stuff from this person and this person and this person and this person and this person. But at the end of the day, everybody's going to relate to different people. And I truly believe that I, I love teaching this. And even though I may not be at this pedestal or this pedestal or this or that and the other, you can choose not to listen to me, right? It, it's all cool. It, it's all just me sharing uh, you know, me sharing what I love to do that I've lived a eat, sleep, trade, repeat on lock the last two and a half years. Right. So it's like, it's cool. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for being here. Let's dive into gold because it's super powerful. And I want to go ahead and share my screen. Thank you guys for staying with the rant real quick. Crazy. This is the first time I'm bringing this up, right? If you are not in the free telegram chat that I put in the last video, what I'm going to need you to do is go ahead and press that like button on this video. And even if you're in the chat, go ahead and press that like button, right? Um, and if you're not in the chat, go back to the last video, press that like button, and then the chat will be in that description. But who am I kidding? It's probably in the description of this video as well. So you can just go ahead and click down on there, but hit that like button while you're at it. But let's talk about it. Everybody wants me to do higher time from analysis all the way down. So what we're going to do is take gold from the weekly all the way down to price action right now i'm gonna pull up the telegram when you guys got into the telegram tuesday morning you may have peeped the gold chart that i had sent sunday night let's check it out price was right here opening if we can ride friday's bullish momentum up to 1980 that will that will be something to look out for overall i'm bullish but keep in mind the big imbalance area we have at 1900 all right so what happened and we're going to walk through this price traded above 
liquidity, ran liquidity, then traded below this liquidity and traded near 1900. And then we immediately came right back to 1950. So again, overall bullish, we took what we needed. We traded back near 1900 and traded back above. Perfect. So I had actually rode some of that bullish momentum going out of Sunday night. I was stop profited early in New York, which was perfect as we see here, right? Market ran up above liquidity. We're going to break this down on the smaller time frame. Then we continue to trade down, make equal lows here. And we came and traded off this four hour 50% imbalance, which we are going to walk through. I had questioned this imbalance. We came back and traded right into it. Um, it's super powerful what went on here. Um, as you can see, the entries from this morning, nice 20, 30 pip risk down in 1904, was able to ride the market up. I only took 200 points out of it, to be honest. It ended up going like 500, as you guys see. Target one achieved here at 150 plus pips. Target two over here, and then target three was really looking at the rest of these candles here. X Games mode, for sure. Weekly, what does gold look like on the weekly? Higher, highest prices we've ever been at. We had an engulfing week last week, and we've already had a nice retracement this week. So overall in the weekly, I'm going to go ahead and have to say that the market's going to play between here and here. I hope you guys would agree. So that's what I like. Bearish engulfing, we've had a nice retracement, right? Go down to the daily. What do we see? All right, we had that last up candle. We had a nice down move that cleared a lot of liquidity hanging out here. As you see, this wick is pretty equal with this wick. So that's an equal pool of liquidity lying, above, lying right above daily imbalance areas with the last down candle. So something to look out for, right? Now, what's also happening up over here, right? We had a nice retracement back into this up move. We had another down push. So overall, I'm not looking for anything to the left of this wick. I want to focus in on this price. And then we have this daily imbalance that we could be looking at as well on smaller time frames. Now, what we're going to do is right here, this four hour drop before we trade it up above and we didn't get any deep retracements into it. Right? So what I want to go ahead and look for is where is that 50% retracement inside of this four hour candle? Right? And actually, let me go ahead and do this the other way. And you guys are going to see the number's not going to be there, but it didn't quite get to 50%. So let me go ahead and mark it off. Right? Let me go ahead and delete the fib price right there at 1902.58 was about the 50%. I actually had it at about 1903. Let me just edit that real quick again. So 1903, right around there had liquidity, right? So this is what I'm looking for. Possible bullish retracement to continue bearish, right? Four hour imbalance right here, rounded off in 1980. Got to play your 80, 20 levels. Perfect. Now we'll go down to the hour. What does the hour look like? Why am I bullish on it? Right? What happened all last week? We had all these lows and we took it last Friday, traded above, had nice retracements deep in here and started catching these buys already. So why am I enticed to buy because of this possible institutional candle, right? That already got played deep into retracement. And I just want to go ahead and clear these highs, possibly trade into this candle, possibly trade up into this imbalance to buy, to sell down into 1900, right? So what happens over the course of Sunday night and into Monday morning, right? I told you guys that I was in a position, I was in the buy position here, I rode this up. I was overall looking for that 1980 price. Now what happened right at New York Open was super powerful. Look over here, above liquidity, what do we have? A big area of imbalance. Well, how can we mark down this area of imbalance? Well, you guys can see that we have this consecutive up candle structure, right? What do we wanna play on this up candle structure? The open, right? Where you guys could probably see where it's about 50% of the overall imbalance as well right on the money. The open of the buy to sell is the 50% of the 15 minute imbalance. Crazy. What happens right at New York open? We go and trade up into that 1960, 1961 level, right? I was able to, you know, secure whatever we traded above liquidity. And then what did market do from there? It took liquidity pool one, liquidity pool two. 
as I go ahead and trade this out all throughout the rest of the day. Now, through the rest of Monday and through Tuesday morning, I didn't touch it. I let it play out. We had cleared that liquidity pull to the high side. Now we're either going to wait for the market to come near 1900 or we wait for it to get up to 1980. We're going to go back down to the 15 minute because it's super powerful. We got to let Asian session consolidation go out, right? Let the market trace out a little bit. But overall, what we get, right? What are we doing? We're creating more liquidity for our candle that we had pointed out. And then what happens this morning during New York session? We made more lows and we come trade right into that four hour imbalance area, right? Pool of money, sell structure, candle wicks right down here at the near the 50% of the higher time frames, right? We saw that evidence of re accumulation, right? We traded above the highs here. We traded above this structure. There's so much imbalance here that never got filled because we moved away so quickly and that's fine that's how it's going to be sometimes right what are we targeting these these and then overall what i had pointed out for everybody as well and i know this is going to be a little longer they're always a little longer that's all right for those that stay you get the full value right what did we do? Traded low, traded above, liquidity pool one, liquidity pool two, two, made equal here. I was keeping an eye on this candle, buy to sell candle, imbalance, 50%, who knows? Nice little 40 pip stop, whatever it may be. What do you guys think happens? Now, I, did I take this sell position? No, this is just a train. This is just to show you guys, again, like just, what happens if you were if you missed all the sells and you missed all the buys before this could have been hey if this was your trade this was your trade i'm just showing you guys how the market you know how it really works to be honest so market trades up i'm going to take these highs and what happens when we go hit that 1941 price you had there are 23 pips in drawdown for a potential 86 pip gain right it's over three to one ratio if you would have taken the sell you would have been good to go right? Overall, I let this market trade up and I didn't touch it for the rest of the day. I got out of my positions kind of early. It's whatever. That's how it's got to be. Um, and then overall, right? Markets just consolidated out of this. Now, what's crazy about the sell position, right? I just mentioned to you guys, and this will be the last part of the video. So I posted this five minute chart. I was on the road. Um, I pointed this all out, right? Taking that sell position, small 20, 30 pip risk during Asian session, Higher time frame confluence around the 1950, 55 price. And I told y'all I was going to share it with y'all. Why did we have high confluence? This institutional candle and then this mitigation candle. This mitigation candle that helped them on this one was technically another institutional candle because it took these highs. So what do we know what to do with these candles? Mark off the 50%. See that small little imbalance that lies in there? Boom. Now, <laughs> here, here it is. Here it is. Colt, you're like, Colton, it wasn't during session. I get it. I get it. But if your risk to reward is there, Colt will be moving 100 pips during Asian session. No cap. And I just, I like to watch it. So I'm going to show you guys what happened on a smaller time frame, and we're going to end this off. Higher time frame confluence around that 1950 to 1955 area. Right? This is the end of New York session. Market opens up here. Sorry. This is the end of New York session. Market opens up here. What do we do? We trade sideways. We create all that liquidity. What happens? We have this pool of money. We have a nice, what could be institutional move up. So what do we do? We wait for the market to come trade back at the lows. Maybe show evidence of equal structure. And then what can you do? You could take any retracements offer it. Now, did I catch this? 
Now, did I catch this? No, because it honestly wasn't the cleanest, right? It, it was high on this institutional candle. And, but either way, guys, you guys also got to understand that stops are above there, right? That's my stop loss, 1954.81, right? So this isn't where I got in though. This was cleaner. Why was this cleaner? Because I saw the evidence of them trade at the lows. And then we played the open of this candle, right? They all matter. I'm telling you guys, they all matter. Look, this hang out, drop below this drive up, mitigate the open drop low. Right. And what are we going to, what are you going to go ahead and target? So we're going to go to the five minute, but right. What are we going to target? Pool number one. Why is this, why is this pool number one, right? We already understand that we have these lows, right? This is the selling structure, right? That we're selling off of. We let it move down through all of this imbalance, right? It played that imbalance a little bit, right? Well, I'm not looking for that. We've traded into take profit one. And then you're just looking at other lows, right? Look at this, look at the power of this candle right here. Down candle, up move, small imbalance. We trade into it. We showed evidence, we traded through it. Now we're just hanging out in this area, probably till London opens, right? But overall, that's what I got for you guys. This is a long one. I appreciate y'all for being here. Much love, let's get it. Hopefully my channel doesn't get reported by anybody. I hope we can do this. Let's go. Let's continue to live bullish.